This is Neil Turbin, and you're watching The Metal Voice. And we're here in Saxon's tour bus with Biff Byford from Saxon. And tonight we're going to go check out Saxon and Motorhead and Crowbot here at the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles. Check out this interview with Biff Byford. So, really thrilled to be have a chance to speak with you because I've been a fan of Saxon since um, the 80s. You know, you, you're... Your song "Freeway Mad" it inspired me, as well as "Wheels of Steel." Yeah. yeah. As well as um, "Street Fighting Gang." Yeah. And all the great Saxon songs of that era. Yeah. And I wrote a song called "Metal Thrashing Mad," and that, uh, along with "Flash Rocking Man" from Except for the kind of the word track, kind of gave right. gave me a, quite a bit of influence to uh, cool. go in that thrashing direction. Yeah. Well, I mean, we we um, I think our, well more to it in ourselves. Uh, Probably the thrashiest of the bands of the 80s we were more punk than, uh, you know, I mean, Maiden were punk in the band before Maiden, they were quite punky. Uh, and I think, sort of, you know, Running Free's got quite a bit of a punk element to it. But, um, yeah, we were sort of, you know, eager and excitable, and, you know, that sort of music came out of us, really. As well as, you know, more laid back stuff as well. Yeah, and you guys have a brand new album coming out, and I actually had the opportunity to hear it, Battering Ram. Um, <laughs> I really enjoyed, uh, you know, the last few albums. I mean, I think the songwriting and the, um, you know, performance level is. I mean, I don't understand how you just keep getting better. Well, we're very, we're very selective with our songs, you know, that we write, and um, you know, me and Nibs wrote quite a bit of the stuff on this album. Um, but yeah, you know, it's it's only the recording as well. You know, everybody has to be, you know, sort of committed hundred percent and. Um, you know, try and make it sound as, as vibrant and as fresh as possible, that's the secret. So, so we record very quickly, we don't mess around, you know, we don't have short days, you know, we, we go for it. So tell me about the Devil's Footprint, I was listening to that, and you're just, uh, on the last note of the song, you're just, I mean, you're full th throttle balls to the wall, you're just, you're not holding anything back. Yeah, I think that note, and the one in Destroyer, there's quite a high note on um, Queen of Hearts at the end, in the middle. Where I go to the Gillen note uh, Dis from uh, what is it Ricochet? You know, Destroyer, Destroyer is amazing. I mean, yeah, so what a heavy, awesome, killer album. Yeah, so you know, um, yeah, it's a legend in England. People woke up one morning in a sort of a village, and the uh, hoof prints went up the up the walls and across across the roofs, and across the fields, and across the across the river. You know, which is the weir in England, and. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting story. I've, I've had my I've had my eyes on that legend for a while, and um, you know, while I was um, scraping around for song ideas, you know, it came up, and uh, I went online, and researched it. You know, there was a was some there was a story told about it later. So yeah, it's a good good story. So it wasn't Santa Claus. No, I don't <laughs> think it was Santa Claus. No, not with cloven hoofs, mate. No, no it could have been the reindeer, I suppose. <laughs> so. So, uh, as far as the, the Saxon songs you'll be playing on this tour and tonight, uh, will you be playing uh, a lot of the newer albums? No, we won't because we're going to come back to America and do a Battering Ram tour. Oh, awesome! Uh, so we are, we are starting with Battering Ram tonight. So that's that's a nightmare. That can be a nightmare because you know some people have never heard it before. So it's a bit like, mm, what's this? But a lot of people have seen it on YouTube. You know the video, uh, and a lot of people have downloaded it off iTunes as well. So. I think uh, a few, maybe a thousand people sent it then there tonight, so that's always good to get everybody else going, you know. So I'm excited yeah. about this new album. I mean, Destroyer, I heard that track and it's like, oh man, that is just uh It's very 80s, it's very 80s, yeah. Yeah, I like it, it's good, good. And I wanted to write a sky fi song, you know. And, and with regards to the studio work that you do and how your approach is, just for all the fans out there, and, and myself being, you know, an aficionado of recording and Mm. understanding the process you know what is the Biff Byford process what is the process of you tracking your vocals um, how well, long does it take you to well, do what we do, do is like we, what we do um, we'll do um, when we're going for it we'll do guitars in the day and then I'll do vocals at night that's how it works and you know sometimes sometimes I'll knock two out at night you know and then we'll come back next day and have a listen uh, some of the tracks are one take, some of them are like several takes. It's just potluck, really. Uh, but you know, you know, we'd um, have my little station, you know, with my special mic that I use, 
a really old microphone. What mic are you using? It's an AKG um, C12. Uh, but yeah, um, candle, you know, glass of wine, darkness in the room. Um, just me and Andy Sneepman, we do the thing together. You know? So I just sing away and, uh, you know, so I do it really. So are you a one take kind of guy? I mean, do you just knock it out? It with makes no difference to me whether it's one take or not, but I don't warm up. So when, I, when I sing, I sing full on, so I don't have to, uh, you know, some guys go, you know, I'll get a few sounds while you warm up, I'll go, I don't warm up, mate, you know, this is what you get, I, I mean, straight away. So, uh, yeah, we start pretty quickly, and, um, and I'll sing for um, four hours, maybe, you know. So do you need to get a little bit warm when you, let's say you're singing something like Destroyer and getting to the, the higher register um, that's probably not no, the first we thing have, we just have fun with it i think if you relax and having fun and you you know if you, you know whether what what whatever whatever relaxes you whether it be a glass of wine or you know a tote of a joint or whatever you want really um if you can get relaxed and, you, and your your voice is in excellent condition which it has to be yeah. um then you can go for the notes without hurting yourself that, that's the secret. You know, a lot of a lot of singers that scream. You know, once they scream, that's it's end of the end of story. I mean, screams can ruin your voice. They really can. And I have screamed sometimes on stage, and then the next day I'll be like, oh man, you know, I shouldn't have done that top C. But anyway, you know, soul pop. We're a live band. There's no click tracks. Any there's no sound reinforcement with Saxon. So what you hear is what you get. I had a question uh, that kind of relates to, I guess, the 80s in the sense where you guys were partners, buddies with Motorhead, you and mm. Lemmy, and Motorhead and Saxon, um, and girls' school even. Yeah. And you guys were kind of like a tag team, you know, you guys were out there on the road quite a bit. Well, the first tour we ever did of England was with Motorhead in 1979. That was the first tour we did, um, it was their bomber tour. So they were already absolutely huge. They'd already had Ace of Spades and all that out. So we did the Bomber tour, and we were just about to release Wheels of Steel on that tour. Uh, went into 1980, so yeah, it was a great, great time. Um, yeah, it was good. I mean, Motorhead and Girls School used to live together in the house. Okay. So we used to go down there, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> that's another story. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, well, that's just so cool that you guys are back, you know, touring together. And, yeah. um, you know, I love Motorhead. Already, I, I mean, yeah, of course, a legacy yeah. band. And we're big friends, you know. That there's, a, there's, a, you know, that there's a good camaraderie. You know, we we take him, we're joking with each other all the time. You know, when we go on stage, they like it because we push, we push the audience, you know, and then they go on and they push it a bit more, you know. So it's good for them to 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 be with the band. We're we're not really like Motorhead. Some of our stuff, you know, is a bit thrashy. But they're more more rock and roll than we are. They're, you know, we're a bit more on the metal side of things. But we can be rock and roll as well. You know, we we do live in both both areas. You know. Well, I think it's amazing that you guys can you know tour together now um, after, of course, you know the era of the '80s. You know, yeah. and the folks over in Europe got to see that tour over here in the U.S. I don't know if you've done so much touring with Motorhead. No, we're just first time. But it's so exciting as a fan to get the opportunity yeah, to, to a, see that tour that I wanted to see in England, yeah, yeah, it's you know, in the UK. Package. It's a great package. Loving it. And I saw you guys on the tour that you did uh, a couple of tours ago yeah. when you played M15, and that was an amazing show for, yeah. for me. A lot of a lot of great songs that were a lot of the classic hits. Mm. So I wondered if you were going to be playing a lot of those songs. Well, we've only got an hour. So, you know, we, we're playing Battery Room, we'll be playing Sacrifice, you know, because that album's still out there. Um, well, mix it up a bit, really. You know, I mean, I mean, last night I ate the set list, so uh, the audience, well, the audience got the set list last night. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. Every show with Saxon is totally different. There's nothing really choreographed. You know, we're not a, we're not a sort of, you know, all with the guitars in the air type band. You know, we, we don't do that. We, everything's quite um, spontaneous that we do. I have things I say every night sometimes, but most of the time, you know, I'm just a nutcase out there enjoying it, really. So I have a couple of other questions, Biff. I don't want to keep you because I know you got to get up there and do sound check. We do. But I wanted to ask you, uh, as we were talking earlier, one-on-one um, -on -one about 
you know, just the book that you have, I actually have it with me. Get this on Amazon. Never surrender, yeah? Yeah, I love that. Yeah, it's a good it's a good read. It's got a lot of sex in it, a lot of sadness, a lot of you know what people want to hear, so it's a good book. But I just wondered, you know, there was a store there was some information about when you were a kid and you were in the textile mills. Yeah. And your dad worked there, correct? That's right, yeah. My dad had his arm ripped off in the same factory I worked in, which is pretty, you know, brutal. That's that's uh, severely, yeah, you know, severely. That, that's, you know, that's every person. If you don't have anything tragic in your family life somewhere, then you're a very lucky person. So, you know, it's just life. What life throws at you, you have to never surrender. Get back up, start again, really. Awesome. The reason I bring that up, Biff, is not to bring back a memory, but to really kind of share with everyone out there, you know, kind of when when you guys were in the 70s and you're in Saxon. Yeah, here's me. This is me in the 70s. A friend brought me brought me this. I seen my first band. I was the bass player. You got it? Oh man, that's amazing. I was 19 there. Uh... Okay. That is too cool. Wow, and there's the bass guitar. There's the bass guitar, yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Biff. It's really been a pleasure to speak with you, and uh, I haven't seen you, man. Really appreciate it.